I don't like advertising. I know on the internet it has become a necessary evil. People usually don't want to pay for accessing a website, nor do I. But websites and television networks are not free to maintain. There are lots of man hours involved. Registration fees, hosting fees, staff salaries, and whatever other costs are necessary in keeping them up and running. So why advertising? Isn't there a better way? Advertising isn't innately evil, is it? I'd say that advertising is not evil in and of itself. Advertising could be used for good, for example, promoting the new free-to-attend children's fitness training in the local park. But we all know that modern advertising companies aren't in the business of advertising free sporting events. They want money, and lots of it. So we end up with ads on TV, radio and the internet for alcoholic beverages, sports betting, gambling, tobacco products, junk food, sugar-laden soft drinks, and any other vice you can think of. If advertising companies were left to their own devices, they would promote absolutely anything for money, regardless of the ill effect on society. I'm sure if heroin was legal, advertising companies would jump at the chance to get a piece of that pie. Here's a classic example of advertising evil, a 1949 TV ad for Camel cigarettes. And no, the tobacco companies were not oblivious to the health effects of tobacco smoking on people's lungs, as shown in the article, The Doctor's Choice is America's Choice. Regulation Rules Luckily, at least in Australia, we've outlawed tobacco advertising as described in the Tobacco Ad Prohibition Act 1992. This basically makes all forms of advertising of tobacco products illegal, including sponsorship of sporting teams and cultural events. However, we still allow junk food, alcohol and gambling companies to peddle their wares at the local football match. Here's a couple of pictures. One of some cricket players with VB beer logos on their jerseys. Another of a New South Wales Blues rugby jersey with VB on the front. And another of some children wearing their favourite McDonald's swim caps. It's hard to blame the local children's sports clubs for allowing the kids to wear advertising, because they do get free uniforms and equipment for their trouble. It seems like a win-win. The kids get their uniforms, and McDonald's get free advertising. McDonald's obviously defend their position by saying that they are encouraging local sport and fitness, but then again, the tobacco companies would do and say the exact same thing if we allowed them to. The only way to stop evil advertising is through regulation. If we allow KFC to be able to sponsor cricket, they will. They'll pay to put their logo on all the uniforms and signage. They'll show a TV commercial every five minutes, and they'll even pay commentators to promote their chicken, even while the game is being played. Last summer, I couldn't even watch the cricket anymore. I may as well have spent my entire summer living in a KFC restaurant. Advertising works. If advertising didn't work, companies wouldn't bother with it. Advertising doesn't just remind the average adult to go out and buy another pizza. It breeds a culture of keeping up with the Joneses. If we keep getting bombarded with the latest ads for Mazda and BMW, and see our neighbours and friends buying the latest model, we feel like we should also go out and get one, even if it gets us further into debt. I have friends who are highly indebted. Does this stop them from buying the latest Mazda SUV? Of course not. Capitalism needs advertising. Without it, nobody would know what they need to buy. To speak frankly, Advertising convinces us to go out and buy shit that we don't need. It convinces us that eating pizza, hamburgers and fried chicken and guzzling down litres of coke 
is somehow going to improve our lives, nothing could be further from the truth. Obesity rates and related diseases have skyrocketed in recent years. Won't somebody please think of the children? The worst thing of all is that we are allowing our children to grow up in a world where their decisions are being influenced by big corporations. We are letting McDonald's, Coca-Cola, alcohol companies and betting agencies teach our children that it's okay to eat unhealthily, drink poison and waste their money gambling. Children are growing up in a world where they are able to recognize a plethora of company branding, but can barely identify more than a couple of national flags. They recognize Ronald McDonald, but not their own Prime Minister or President. Something is wrong in our society, and we need to do something about it. If we don't change the laws, companies will continue on their merry way, encouraging our kids to become a nation of unhealthy, obese drunkards. Yes, some might argue that it is the parents' duty to stop their children from eating unhealthily, but it is extremely hard if every minute of the day our children are exposed to the latest junk food ad or Coke commercial. In the spirit of full disclosure, I'm actually writing this article in a McDonald's cafe. It's not that I like McDonald's food, I pretty much never eat it, it's just that they have free internet and air conditioning. Of course, I'm not a complete cheapskate, I bought a $1 frozen Coke. Just as a note, I read the McDonald's free Wi-Fi agreement and it states, you are not required to purchase any item or pay any fee to access the hotspot. So basically, I gave them a free dollar.